right, so today we're gonna talk about what's in my flight bag. All right, so the bag I have here with me today is the Lift Pro bag from Flight Outfitters. They also do make a Lift bag without the Pro. Uh, there's just some more orange piping and stuff around on this one. I opted for the, the sleeker black look here. Um, again, mine does have some orange on the inside, which I do like. Uh, helps make sure I don't lose anything in there, but very sturdy flight bag. I like it a lot. It's got this special kind of reinforced handle here with some braided metal tubing that goes over top of this or braided metal cable, so it makes sure that this this is really up to the task of being used all day, every single day instructing. All right, so the first thing I have in my bag here, I hope is pretty obvious, is going to be my headset. Now, this headset is a light speed. These are the Zulu 3s, I believe they are. Um, so they are the kind of top of the line ones that, that uh, light speed makes here. But most importantly, they are active noise reduction. So they're an ANR headset. Uh, and what that means is it's going to use electrical signals to help dampen the noise in the airplane. Most of the time when you're starting out flight training, you, you'll get a headset. It's gonna be like a PNR headset, a passive noise reduction. And all that means is it's gonna clamp really well around your ears. It's gonna have some extra foam, some extra padding, uh, but there's not gonna be anything actively reducing the noise. It's just good insulation in the headset. I would highly recommend as soon as you know that you are going to be doing this more than a private pilot or even as a private pilot, but that you're going to go on, continue to rent, or even through your private pilot training, it's really never too early to buy an ANR headset. The only downside is going to be the cost. A lot of them are anywhere from about $700 to $1,000, so it is a lot of money, uh, but it's absolutely worth the investment. Uh, just aside from you know comfort on long trips, they really help reduce a lot of the overstimulation that you might get in the cockpit, a lot of the outside distractions that you get in the cockpit, and it helps you uh, communicate better with your instructor and with everyone outside on the radios as well. So the second thing I have here in my bag is an iPad. Now I have an iPad mini here. Um, the full size ones I've found get a little big for in the cockpit. When you're out sitting at a table or something, uh, they look just fine, but when you get in the plane, it's just a lot uh, to move around all of a sudden. I've got a little bit of an older iPad. I just, if it ain't broke, right? But any kind of iPad mini that you can get, mine also doesn't have any sort of cell service plan on it. I get along just fine uh, using Wi-Fi on there. A lot of the, especially the newer avionics will have some sort of Wi-Fi that you can connect and still use it. I do have ForeFlight on my iPad as well, and I have a ForeFlight Sentry, which is a little thing that'll stick up to the window that allows my iPad to connect to that Wi-Fi in flight so I can still receive GPS information, ADSB traffic, weather updates, that kind of stuff while I'm flying around, especially in an older plane, maybe without some of the fancy technology we have here at the school. Next thing I have in my bag here is going to be a flashlight. Now I've seen some people use headlamps, I've seen some people use flashlights again like this one, but the most important thing that you're going to want on either a headlight or a flashlight is going to be a red lens of some kind. So this one has several different brightnesses of uh, white lenses as well as a flashing like strobe function for an emergency situation. But if you're really using a flashlight most of the time for stuff at night, you are going to want that red lens to make sure that you don't wash out your night vision before you go flying. All right, next thing I have is my handheld radio. Especially as an instructor, this is great. This is what I'm going to use to monitor all my students' comms when they're soloing, doing their first laps in the pattern. Most of the time it's just helped put me at ease. There's really nothing I need to do on this, but it is good in case of an emergency to have a backup like this. I've even seen some older aircraft where you can remove the antenna like this from the radio, and then you can connect a cable from this to your airplane to use this as the radio with the outside aircraft antenna, which I thought was pretty cool. This is the PJ-2 from 40s, I believe, and I think they have the PJ2 Plus out now, something like that, but they all basically have the same functions. They're all really user-friendly and ergonomic, and it's just, again, a good thing to have, mostly in case of emergency, but especially as a flight instructor, it's good to just be able to use that kind of stuff. All right, so another thing I have here is going to be a power pack. Um, I use this to keep my devices charged, especially if I am flying with an iPad, it's running a little bit of uh, low on power. I can plug cables into the top of this and use it as an extra battery. All right, so the last thing that I'm gonna go into before we go into just some of the kind of little knickknacks that I keep in there that I think is really important is a good multi-tool. Here I have a Leatherman Wave, and again, this has all different kinds of stuff on it. So I've got a set of pliers, I've got several different knives, 
knives, saws, that kind of thing built into this. And the one that I think I probably use the most is going to be this little screwdriver attachment here. So the end will pop out and I can have a flat head or a Phillips head in this knife, multi-tool rather, and it really just allows me to, any little loose screws, cam locks, fasteners, if I need to open up one of those to check the oil level, and again, on some of the older aircraft, this is the tool to do it. Again, you can totally use it in a survival type situation, but even in just everyday life, when you're a pilot, something like this is extremely handy. All right, so now into the knickknacks, right? All the little tiny things that I keep in this side. Uh, again, it's not much. I really do like to travel light. If I'm gonna take anything for a day trip or whatever, I'm not gonna keep it in this bag. I wanna keep this mainly just the essentials. You know, overpacking and think, well, everything for every possible scenario that I can bring along with me is not really the way to pack. You just wanna kinda use the things that you would use in everyday life, either again, as a pilot or as an instructor. So I've got a bunch of pens. Why do I have a bunch of pens? Because I find them, because other people leave them. So. I I'm just basically stealing pens 100% of the time. I do have some that I've actually bought, but I do wanna just make sure I keep all my pens stacked up because I'm gonna leave them around too. So I'm not stealing, I'm just trading, right? Aside from that, I have some headache medication. If I feel one coming on, it's good. I've got some spare batteries for my fancy headset that requires batteries. Uh, I've got a little space blanket that I, I really don't even know why I keep it in there. It's, I've never used it. I've got foggles here in case my student forgets theirs. This is not for impromptu instrument training on my part, but I do just have have a set again I know it's very possible that my students gonna forget to bring these along on one of the trip and I want to make sure that I have them I like this pair because I wear glasses normally and this one will actually clip on to the glasses and then I can just fold it up and down as I need to instead of trying to remove my glasses or put foggles over my glasses these are the ASA foggles here as well um, and they're, like I said, they're fantastic. Last thing I have down here is a tire pressure gauge uh, to check the tire pressure on the airplane. I don't use it a lot, especially here at Thrust. Most of the time our maintenance does a fantastic job of uh, making sure all of our tires are inflated correctly, but especially when I'm flying other aircraft, I wanna make sure I have the right tire pressure and I'm not gonna use my calibrated hand for that. I'm gonna make sure I keep this gauge in here with me. So a couple more knickknacks I have is a towel for me when it gets hot, again, when I'm not flying in these uh, nice air conditioned archers here that we have at thrust and another one is this nasty oil rag so i can wipe all the oil and check the oil levels and that kind of stuff i can wipe any sort of gunk off of areas that i might need to to check to make sure to see if anything's dripping fuel oil that kind of stuff i'm not going to use this to clean the plane because it's covered in junk but i will use it again to just check the oil so i have something i don't need to go hunting for it all right, everybody, I hope you enjoyed the peek inside my flight bag today. If you liked any of the items you saw today, we have a link down in the description below. If you had any questions on what I carry in my flight bag, leave a comment down below, and don't forget to like and subscribe so you don't miss out on future content.